it's time for... So as you guys know, I took some heavy losses in the stick insect collection. If you're unaware of that video, it's the one that says, I'll be back, hence why I've been away for a week. So the next few Phasmid videos that you will be getting from me are all my odds and ends of the collection. So I may not have both genders to show you through these Phasmid Files videos. However, I'm going to do my best for you. And in today's video, we look at the Diaphrodes Gigante. Welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So, as I have mentioned in a previous video, I'm also going to be standing through most of my videos now, rather than sitting down and you're staring at my knees or other places that you should not be looking. Um, <laughs> but yes, this is not the final setup. I actually have my tabletop here, so where I were to place enclosures, this is a small one, you can see it's still chopped off on the camera so I need to get that angling a little bit better but I'm also going to be changing positions later down the line and you will see why when it comes to it. Now I have one adult female D Gigante that I can show you here today and she is sadly being sent off to a subscriber of mine who has a mature male to allow this girl to breed and serve her purpose. Let's have a look at her shall we? So here she is the adult female D. gigante. Commonly, these guys are known as the green bean stick insect or the lime green stick insect. But be careful with common names, especially among phasmids guys, as it can cause a lot of confusion between species. So when you purchase one, make sure you always ask for the scientific name. Now these Hulk-like phasmids are really, really cool and super easy to feed too as they will happily take to bramble, especially if you're living in the UK, where it's widely available. But they will also happily take to eucalyptus if you can get hold of it. Or oak, or acacia. I'm not sure if I pronounced that last plant name correctly. So if somebody would like to correct it in the comments below on how to pronounce it, please do so. Now the PSG number, or Phasmid Study Group number, for the D. Gigante are 260. Or their CLP number, which is slightly more newer way to distinguish stick insects, is 19. Now these are natively found on the Caribbean islands and first stops I believed were taken from Grenada. Yep, that's it, just gonna leave the filming area, are we? Out of the light, out of the way. You're gonna make this video a bit of a pain, aren't you, old girl? Now she's a big bulky girl and females can reach a whopping 15 centimetres, whereas males reach around 11 centimetres. Now, as I said, I don't have a male to show you, but they are very, very different. They are winged and they are brown as well, which is really sexually diamorphic between the two. As you can see, she has these smaller little wings here that she cannot use to fly. Males, on the other hand, have full wings. And they kind of fly, but they more like flutter or jump far distances and glide. Now, if we look at the spines here, they go down from the mesothorax to the metathorax. Now, for those that don't know the lingo, the mesothorax is of the segment of the forewings and the metathorax, the segment of the hind wings. Now, the spines actually are slightly pink, as you can see here which is really, really pretty. Now on some specimens, the spines are a lot more of a vibrant pink and can even have a pink segment or line going across the metathorax. It really is a sight to see. And unfortunately, hers are rather dull. Now the interesting thing is the naming of these phasmids. So Diaphrodes gigante, the diapharo part, I believe might be Greek if I remember correctly, which is a term for carry or bear. And gigas is the Latin word for gigantic. 
So mixing these words into the name, Diaphrodes, Gigantia, is kind of like carrying or bearing a giant weight. Nymphs of these species want to be raised on a minimum of 60% humidity levels. Now for you tarantula keepers, it's kind of like just having a drier environment, but with a water dish. Now, with phasmids, a lot of it's to do with air humidity, not just moisture in the ground. So as they grow older, they can bear drier environments. However, you want to always have some form of humidity in there. If it drops to the 40s or the 50s, that's when you'll have problems, especially in the young versions of these. Now, a fully developed female like this will do fine in a slightly drier environment. However, I always provide a light misting now and again just to keep her hydrated. Now, females like this take around about six months to fully develop from nymph stage to adult. But they can live for a further 9 to 12 whopping months at this stage. More likely 9 within the hobby. Males on the other hand tend to develop within about 5 months and only live for a further 6 months. So if you have an older male in your culture and a younger female, you're going to have issues. You always want to have them around the same age or have the females a little bit younger than the males. Although with this species, with only a month's difference in maturity, you're normally all right either way. So let's have a little look at the appearance. So we have a more of a browner antennae with yellow eyes on this green body. Now the green does resemble a sort of lime green or even that of green beans, especially with the shape as well. So you can see why they have this common name. Now you can see she also has these sort of pinkish warts going across her head and body there. And the segments of the abdomen are divided with a yellower brownish sort of shade. And each segment is sort of rounded on the edge. Now these guys simply drop eggs and you can sort of tell that by the end of the abdomen shape that they are droppers. Whereas if they were diggers, she would have a long ovipositor. Now these hind legs do have small spines coming across them, although they won't pick up well on the camera. And they will kick for defence, although she is fairly placid and is not attempting to kick me. She's simply moving her leg. Oh, sorry girl. But uh, the kicks of these really don't hurt. But at this angle, let's zoom in. You see that paler section across the mesa and metathorax where it's almost white. That's the parts that I mentioned earlier, can be a vibrant pink within certain specimens. For handleability, these guys tend to be pretty okay. They are a bit of a fidget, but once they're on you, they tend to walk for a little while and then they calm over time. But they will sometimes simply drop and play dead almost, just to deter you from them. My favourite characteristic, however, is always the head. Almost cartoon-like with those yellow eyes, redder mouth parts and that lime green head. Looks almost unreal, doesn't she? <laughs> you can imagine this in some form of child's animation film, perhaps. Now for suitability to beginners, I would say these are a beginner species. If you're, oh dear, there we go. She did her dropping that I mentioned. But yeah, these are fine for beginners, guys. Just make sure that at the nymph stage, they have that little bit more water to drink from. Other than that, they're pretty easy to keep. But there is one more thing you want to bear in mind if you want to get the D. giganti, and that is genetics. Now these guys, as in all phasmids, will interbreed with brothers and sisters. Oh, hang on, she's gonna get a weight. As I laid her on the dead ferns, she did her I'm playing dead trick. But I thought I'd film this so you can see the yellow parts between the joints and the mouth parts. But she is absolutely fine. <laughs> Sorry, girl. Now, one thing you do need to bear in mind with these, like all phasmids, they will interbreed with their siblings, which is fine for a fair few generations, but afterwards you want to add more to strengthen the bloodlines. Now, she's going to be a pain and walk up my arm where I can't film properly. Probably going to mess up the audio too, so bear with me just one moment. So here you have a size comparison with my face. She's actually climbing on my ear. What I've been trying to say for a few shots now is 
you want to always add some fresh bloodlines in because they will start to deteriorate nymphs will start dying easier it'll be harder to produce them to adulthood if they've had generation after generation after generation of only with siblings and i've noticed that in this species that can actually make a hell of a difference once you get to around the fifth or sixth generation without adding pure bloodlines you get a lot weaker genetics so I think I've said all I need to say in this Phasmid Files video. I'm going to put her back now. Um, remember guys, always keep them in an enclosure at least three times their height if not more. And with a whopping span of 15 centimeters means you are going to need at least a 45 centimeter tall enclosure. So I think that's going to be it for today's Phasmid Files video. I hoped that helped you learn a little bit about the D. gigante, a beautiful beginner species, especially if you want to start out with something a bit more impressive with size and coloration. So I'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see what else dwells within the realm here, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. That's going to be it from me. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.